You know, usually I'd, I'd open the show with a pithy one-liner, but just before we went live, I turned to Dan and I said, hey, I hope you have a fun show. And he just looked at me and said, I hope you crash and burn. <laughs> Welcome to the WrestleTalk <laughs> podcast review of Monday Night Raw. I'm Luke Cohen, TAD. I'm joined by this prick. Welcome, please. <laughs> press the thumbs. <laughs> Excuse me. You're jam that jampion so, prick. Yeah, Thank absolutely, you. Absolutely right. I mean, I feel like we should be non-PG I was with this one anyway. doing some swears. <laughs> if you're not careful, I'll start. Little... I really wanted Cody to say the C word this week. I, I, really, I would love it to go there. <laughs> could you imagine? Oh, could you I imagine could. if he'd have just dropped the C bomb? Hey, Rock, you're not a heel. You're a. It would have been so fantastic. Oh, well, please do press the subscribe button if it's your first time here and you haven't already. Uh, once again, a huge thank you to everyone who helped us get over the 85,000 mark. We're actually now nearly at 86,000. Mm. Our 10 hour stream, there'll be an update for it very, very soon. Honestly, I promise you, we are working on it. It's not just... Do you know how many things are happening this month? (laughs) It's a thing that we want to do. We're working on it. But leave a comment down below with your thoughts on this episode of Raw. And if you're watching live, join our wonderful live chat and uh, get involved in the conversation. Let us know what you thought. If you were here for our Saturday podcast, then you will know what to do. You'll know what to do when I say, when I say poopy, the chat says... You know what to do. Oh, and I if wasn't you, here. What, what are the chats supposed to do? You'll see, you'll see once the... Uh, in about, like... Oh, Daniel Bogdweller. Everyone, someone knows what's <laughs> up. <laughs> in about 10 <laughs> seconds time, you're going to really see uh, what if people That's were there for the Saturday thing. show. Anyway, uh, and, you know, if you want your comments read out on the air, wrestle.com forward slash support, you'll add, have every single one of them read above the five US dollar amounts. Right. We Here we go. It's all starting to file in now. Oh, is it but? Yep, when I say poopy, you say butts. And the chat <sighs> floods in with butts. So Yeah. We were I mean, we were doing rock call and response. You were, yeah, I can see why you've done that. It's just that the rock's so it's good again. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we were past it. Well we were. We were talking about how the rock used to be late. Willy Willy Bumhole. Well, that was the rock. Yeah, that, yeah. that was the thing, yeah. Uh so we're gonna open up today's episode talking about this Cody Rhodes promo. I spoke about this in my AW review, so I'm not, uh, sorry, in my uh, edited review. I'm not going to go too long on this because I obviously want to throw mm. it to you, our, 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 Crody, our Cody Crybaby. Uh, of the week. Rep, yeah, rep, not even of the week, just, you know. I'm, the, I'm, the yeah, I'm, I am very much the, the leader of this chapter of the Cody Crybabies. The poster boy for us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I said this in my edited review that we don't see, or we haven't seen insider Cody Rhodes mm-hmm. since he left AEW. When he was in AEW, and because it was the audience for it there, you would do more of these insider, I'm going to reference things in the wrestling media sphere at the moment, mm. and you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Since he's gone to WWE, because it is a different audience, he hasn't really done that. What he's done is just, hello, my name is Cody Rhodes. I cry, I get emotional. My dad was Dusty Rhodes. I'd really like to win the world title in honor of him. When I do win that title, I'm going to hand it to my mom, and this is an emotional thing for me. And I'm here to finish a story, and that is my story I'd like to finish. It's all character based. It's all great. Like it's all like mm-hmm. built within the character. This week, however, this was like AEW Cody Rhodes just showed up again mm. because this is a promo that referenced the reports of The Rock coming in to save WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. It's referencing the reports of not really being able to swear like The Rock does, so he just goes out there and swears a bunch. He name drops Brian Gowitz and says, like, you've come back, you're now writing all of The Rock's material. He called himself Homelander, a reference to what AEW fans used to call him. It's like, that's a tranquilo um, uh, YouTube thing. Mm. He was the first one to say, like, he feels like Homelander. Mm. And Cody watched those videos. He... He's, partic- he's specifically referencing things that people say about him online. And this was kind of great. Like it's, it's kind of easy to forget that Cody's last promo, I'm pretty sure it was his last promo in AEW, which is where What Do You Want to Talk About was born, was a reference to Sean's report that his contract was coming up in AEW. So this really did feel like insider baseball, reference-heavy Cody Rhodes. But it really had a lot of bite to it. Oh my god, it was gloves are off. Because this was, he was able to go out there 
and kind of fight against this report of like the, the memo is real by all accounts like there's a lot of journalists who've reported this memo that's gone out to town to be like don't be saying these sorts of things online don't be saying these sorts of things to promo the rock can do it because the rock's on the board the rock can get away with this sort of thing but you as talent cannot and the report from this one is that cody on this show is like well you now need to go and do that because the rock really pushed it on smackdown mm. so if you don't go out there and do this sort of promo then you're gonna look weak so he went out there he called him a whiny bitch he called him what was it carny succubus which, carny is, succubus? which well, I, again the the well i'll get into it when i start doing my bit but the writing of that the idea of like you're a carny succubus if you don't know what that means you're a whiny bitch like the yeah. uh, the levels of going for something a little bit more out there and then something a little bit direct it's like Carney Succubus is an AEW reference. That's what you is call it? that's what you call Chris Jericho. Oh, okay. During, I didn't even during their feuds. Right, okay. So yeah, he's calling him a Carney Succubus. Uh what's the other one that he said? Um he basically said, like, you're not a real heel, you're an mm-hmm. asshole. Like yeah, yeah. let's talk about what you've been doing. You think that like my fans are Cody Crybabies? Well, what about you? You've been crying behind the scenes because you weren't getting a WrestleMania match and you said decided to steal mine because you felt like you needed to save WrestleMania. Again, referencing these very real reports that are going on here. And his big ends line was what's gonna happen at WrestleMania? Who are we gonna get? Because you haven't wrestled in a long while. And when the bell rings, we're going to find out whether we're going to get that big Dwayne energy or little dick syndrome. Which got an LDS chant immediately. Yeah. Because Cody's very good at this. So he set Mm -hmm. that up to be like, oh, we're going to get LDS, little dick syndrome. So you already told the audience, here's what you... C-E-O. C-E-O. That's exactly it. (laughs) I I said that time. Like, I think it's great that it's in her, like, as part of the entrance theme. In the same way, it's... Give me the chant. It's part of Seth's song to be like, Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Like that's part of the song. It's baked into the song itself. We we as fans want that call and response thing. So yeah. like when you present us with here is a thing that you can chant. Yeah. We'll take it. When I say poopy, the chat says Stop it. <laughs> I I can't countenance this. Uh and his last <laughs> bit was just, you know, uh you call yourself the final bot. Kudos to Brian Gowitz for that like name dropping him brian gowitz by the way i said on on twitter it wasn't me well no specifically he said it wasn't me uh and also i but what was me was i told the rock about your stupid dog and yeah. i was about to quote him i didn't in the end but i was gonna be like you leave the dog out of this or i will publicly come in this podcast and burn your very good book <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden i find myself on brian's side um it is a stupid dog i'm kidding of course i'm kidding that's maybe the worst thing you've ever said <laughs> and i'm like just to be to be abundantly clear i'm not one of those goodest boyo millennials <laughs> i like dogs a normal amount but that dog is a beauty it's a very beauty it's a very pretty dog and his big final line at the end was are you gonna be the final boss at wrestlemania or are you just going to be Roman's side chick? Mm-hmm. A great promo from Cody. I'll, I'll, I'll get your thoughts on this now. Because one of the things I've... I, my, my final thing I want to say on this is that this build for WrestleMania is not the most captivating. It's not the most like must-see build. Because what it is, is Cody and or Seth cut a promo on Raw or an Elimination Chamber. And then on SmackDown... Cody, uh, Roman and or Rock cut a promo. And then on Raw, Cody and or Seth cut a promo. And then on SmackDown, Rock and or Roman cut a promo. And then on Raw, Cody and or Seth cut a promo. And it's just like, it's, it's, ju- it's what I was saying. You don't think that's must see? Well, it's just people having a chat. It's not just people having a chat. The- it's the best in the business doing the best in the business every single week. If you may let me finish. One of my point was, it is not captivating TV in the sense of like, man, I, you know, or they're, they're face to face and they get into a big brawl and they're doing X, Y, and Z. They're doing all the bells and whistles and everything. It's just people down the barrel of the lens saying things. Mm. And they have made this so great in so, because every single promo has this new level of bite to it. If you just put out two people and said like, you cut a promo on this show, you cut a promo on this show, but you never interact with each other. That can grow stale Mm -hmm. really, really quickly. But these guys have made this really, really work. And it is like, this is a promo. This is like the fourth, fifth week that we've had Mm. this style of promo segment for this build. And they're still finding new elements of bite to it. 
That is the point I was making, Dan, before you jumped down my throat, YouTube comments. <laughs> now, please. Well, just because like uh, the reason I was like uh, about pushing back, because I think there is something about the whole conversation, whether it's getting your stopwatch out and timing the wrestling, whether it's, you know. Oh, I will do that. Of course you will. But, but that's like, that's. I, well, I, I like wrestling on my wrestling show. Shoot me. But uh, this is wrestling. This this is this, all part this, of this what is pro wrestling is wrestling. to me. Yeah. So like that's why I'm like I'm like okay so I mean that's almost a whole other conversation is this, is the stopwatch thing. But then for me when I there is there is examples on this show featuring one of the people in this tag match where I'm like this promo kind of did nothing for me and this feels stale. We'll get to that one when we talk about the Seth and Drew segment. But every single week when it I watched SmackDown live all the way through this week because I was so excited to see what The Rock was going to do next. I was so excited for this segment that I like shushed everything and, and watched what Cody was going to have to say in his response. I eat up the Instagram post. I, I, so I feel like these segments, which are the best people in the business at doing this job, doing it to the best of their ability, creating content that makes me... Content, I fucking hate that. Sorry, I swore. Oh, um, Daniel. That, well, I, I've also just undone a point that I was going <laughs> to... Or maybe I've emphasized a point I was going to make about when you use swearing. But... um. All of it is is so good that it makes me want to come back and watch the next one. So it, it it too much of one thing can be stale. In the set, too much of just chatting away can be stale. Too much of just brawling and not having a conversation. Like, well, I've seen that five times. Like, what's the what's the next I, level? I can, there's only so many times I can see a pull apart brawl. The what they've done so brilliantly here is by using restraint. And ain't that a word we would never use for WWE in the past? There have been two slaps, and this is this actually ties into my whole sort of assessment of what this story is ultimately about, which is toxic masculinity. It's hilarious that the entire length of physicality that we have seen in this series of promos and the build to this mega match is two bitch slaps. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. And the ability to keep us on a a hook the whole time to keep me like. What are you going to say next? What's going to say next? It's like absolute masterful. God bless The Rock. Yeah. Because the obviously The Rock's been on more shows than Roman has. Mm -hmm. If Rocky weren't here and this was just Cody and Roman, I think we would have grown quite tired of this. Yeah. But I think The Rock has added a really great element to this match and to this WrestleMania build. Mm. And I know there are people who feel that The Rock has overshadowed Roman. But as I was saying on the Saturday, on the SmackDown review, I think that's by design, because I think that's going to play into what's going to happen this coming Friday. Because the second half of this segment was Paul Heyman came out to... And it was funny, because Paul Heyman came out to apologize for having those New York cops. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, apologizing, A, it wasn't a great uh, a great plan. B, it was a pretty stupid angle. Mm -hmm. Like, it was almost like, uh, yeah, I'm just apologizing. I think this promo seg I think this storyline deserves better as an angle. And mm -hmm. I thought that was a very weak angle that we did. Um but he had a message for Cody from Roman. This Friday, it is a face-to-face. -face. It's Cody and it's Roman. And Paul Heyman has said, the tribal chief gives you his word. No member of the bloodline is going to get involved in this segment. Mm -hmm. It is just going to be Roman, Cody, and Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman's the, he's like, I, I will be there because I'm the council, but there'll be no other members of the bloodline. It will just be you two. I just ask, you give me your word, you'll also come alone. I think Roman's being honest here. But The Rock's going to show up. And that's going to lead to more of that tension between The Rock and Roman Reigns. Because Roman Reigns wanted this to just be a one-on-one -on -one face off A reminder that he is the main event of WrestleMania. He is the champion. He is the tribal chief. But The Rock is painting himself elsewhere as, I'm the real star. I'm the actual head of the table. So I think he's going to show up on Friday, which is why I think all of this is by design. Do you remember what you said on the WrestleMania reactions we did last year, the live, the live reactions? I went to the bathroom, so I missed Roman's entrance, but you and Pete were talking about it, and you referred to Roman's entrance music with a very specific terminology. Do you remember? Epic? Nope. I don't know that. You said it was final boss music. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And so here's come The Rock, and just out from under Roman, who is the final boss, yanked it from underneath it and gave it to himself. So you have, yeah, yeah, you're the, I acknowledge you, you're my tribal chief. Absolutely. I'm the final boss. 
which one of those is the top dog? And this is right. where everything about the promo this week that Cody cut merged with the promo that Rock cut, which I thought was the best work he's done this whole run. And ain't that saying something? I think it's the best work he's done since he left in 04. Mm -hmm. I would probably... Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I agree. I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm inclined to agree. No, I, I fully agree. Um, and it, what I, and, and I've, I, it's what's so good about it was that it was it flipped on a dime. He went from being haha laughy rock concert making the fans cheer, which some people were like, is that too good? Like he's making them cheer. I had some people being like, he didn't get Cody over or whatever. And I was like, did you miss the second half of the promo where he just went? And now I'm going to talk to you like this. I'm going to yeah. talk to you at no higher volume than this. And I am going to look directly down the camera and express to you that I take Cody Rhodes' threat incredibly seriously. The other side of that coin is what Cody... We spoke about this, and I, I go on about this, and it's what gets people in the comments telling me that I don't know what a heel is. Whenever I see a, a heel belittle someone, and Roman falls foul of this all the time, making Seth out to not be important and not interesting, Cody specifically said in this promo, which rock am I going to get? Are you going to be Roman Sajic? Or am I going to get the rock that I idolized and I grew up with? He put rock over as mm -hmm. the best in, in the business, one of the best in history. He literally said, put him on the Mount Rushmore, another insider thing that we're all talking about who's yeah, on your yeah. Mount Rushmore. And it was so astonishingly effective. Cody's my favorite wrestler, man. What I was saying to Editor Ellis as I walked in, we were talking about heels and what makes a good villain and how it's not enough to just be like, you people suck. You know, it's not all like, hey, I hate being in this town. Yeah, like that's Drew did some of that in on this show, which right. I felt was beneath him. It's rote, it's cliche, it's you know, villain one oh one. It doesn't effectively make me hate you. What you're supposed to do as a heel is I'm supposed to want to see the good guy win. I'm supposed to want to see you get defeated and see my guy win. I want Cody to win so bad now, as a result of this work, that it is some of the most effective work I've seen in twenty five years of watching wrestling. I thought the, I mean, I talked about this at length on the, the Saturday show, but I thought the, the second half of mm -hmm. the rock concert, when it was just, and now I'm serious rock, mm -hmm. I thought was the best stuff. Some of the best stuff that man has ever done. Because really, like when you look at, when he left in 04, and then when he sporadically would come back, he was doing tired rock shtick. Mm -hmm. His return stuff with John Cena while I loved it at the time because finally someone was saying what we were all thinking, which is no one actually really likes this John Cena fella, but he's still always on top. Finally, someone's actually coming out and saying that. So I like it, but actually going back and watching it with benefit of hindsight, it's bad. Mm -hmm. The promos are bad. Rock feels like he doesn't need to tr not try rehearse. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to write things down. He's just, I'll just go out there and wing it every single time. I'll go out there and I'll wing it. And it never did. His first promo he said was, I'm never leaving. And then he left. Mm -hmm. And he and like he just and he wasn't there the following week. And so then he has to do another promo. He's like, look, when I said I was never leaving, what I what I really meant was, like, I'm I'm not I'm not leaving mentally. Physically I'm not here. Like <laughs> and it was like this nonsense. And then every other time he's come back, he's had to do when I say poopy, you say, and like mm -hmm. do that instead. Or like, I'm I'm ain't America great. Like I didn't like his day one promo with, mm -hmm. with Jinder. I thought it was really rote and, yeah. and a bit trite. Here, he's got a character. He's got an edge. He's got something about him that's just like... When he just looked down the barrel of the lens and went, you're welcome. Oh, my God. I played it to my girlfriend last night yeah. cause, who is not a wrestling person. And it's the, I think everyone has done this and play, played it to the children or the, or the mothers in their lives who know Moana so well. Yeah. And she was like... It's, in, it's incredible. Yeah. But what's great about this as a return promo to that is that it tells you everything you need to know about each character. So The Rock, the reason why he was singing so sinisterly, You're Welcome, is he was cutting a promo on Cody's mum and what he wants to not do to Cody's mum. It's not Blink-182. But what he's going, like, he's going to get this weight belt. He's going to drench it in good. Cody's sweat and blood mm -hmm. and his tears. And he's going to hand it to his mum and say, You're Welcome. Cody says, look, I brought up my mum, so it's fair game that you bring her up as well. But let's talk about your mum. She's a nice woman. Right. <laughs> and it's like, I think she's great. Mm -hmm. And I think she's a wonderful woman. So let me tell you about my mum. And then talk about how much of a badass his mum mm -hmm. is. Like, my mum's not scared of you. My mum's not afraid of you. Well, he put over how much of a badass Rock's mum as well. He said yeah. he held her back while I did chops on Kevin Owens yeah. once. Like, that, that's what we know of the Rock's mum. Yeah, exactly. And it's putting over like, 
I am a good guy mm-hmm. and I'm not going to take the cheap option of being like your mum jokes. Yeah. Instead, I'm going to talk about how great these women are mm-hmm. and how they're not afraid of you. And I'm not afraid of you either because all I've seen for the last few weeks, last few, last month or so, is who The Rock really is. Mm-hmm. But that's not The Rock that I want come WrestleMania. I want the great one. Mm-hmm. I want that Mount Rushmore rock. I thought this was tremendous stuff. Can I can I put I, this, I think a lot of there's a, a little part of my head that's seen people go like say Cody's really good but spend all the time talking about the rock. So I just want to pivot and talk specifically about why Cody is my favorite wrestler at the moment. He's talking about the rock cuz he's feuding with him. No, I'm oh, we're talking about oh, the rock. we're oh, not sorry. putting over Cody. We're yeah. we're just putting over the rock. And I want to specifically talk about Cody because yeah, right now and for a while now he's been my absolute favorite. I'm a big Cody cry baby, we know this. But what it is is not just this promo or this run or this return to WWE. It's everything he's done since realizing, even leaning into Stardust. You know what? I hate this, but I'm going to try and make it work. Mm-hmm. And he did. And then since then, that's why when he posted to his Instagram the little picture of himself from from back in the day as a little teaser of what we were going to get from Cody tonight. Yeah, you, his, yeah. his indie show. He should have I put a poster of him, where, a picture of him in the Bullet Club garb. Yeah. yeah, and it was, and from that moment, I was like, oh. That's what I mean, because it's it's all inside of Cody. So then when I was thinking about this last night before before watching the show this morning, how um, this whole storyline has really become like a fascinating exploration about the idea of toxic masculinity and what that is. And like to... Do you want to start your your woke, woke ra- rant of the week? Yeah, yeah, your snowflake woke rant of the week. Yeah, <laughs> we need to get some form of banner or or a jingle or whatever. But I'm about to go on a woke rant. Sorry about it, but uh, actually, I'm not sorry about it. In fact, that saying sorry is something the work should never do. Um, toxic masculinity is very simply this idea that the 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 need to force men to be a specific type of thing creates this negative cycle that stops us from living authentically and and creates a, a horrible world where we all you know I, i'm butchering it to get to the point which is that what we have here is a story of two types of masculinity the the rock and roman falling on one side and cody and seth on the other and what it is to be a man and then when i got home last night and saw vince russo had said something about we i don't want cody crying we need a man we know i want my men to be men we need oh, men's men we need to stop giving him air we do but like you know the last time he really understood anything was in 1999 but and he he didn't understand it then either he is a he is a man with one fluky idea yeah he is the eric he's like eric bischoff in the sense that he had one good idea and has run an entire career off the back of it but eric bischoff has accomplished way more he had a couple more good ideas (laughs) eric bischoff like a couple more good ones yeah Okay, yeah, but his one big success... Yeah, NWO. Yeah, which yeah. also he did get from he, he somewhere. Yeah, but he like, that's not the one. Vince Russo is a failed writer. Yeah. Who has failed and failed and failed and failed. He has actually had zero successes in the world of professional wrestling without the safety net of Vince McMahon and has effed up everything else that he has done. And yet, for some reason... I keep having to hear his name. It's like, well, Vince Russo thinks this. Who gives a fuck what Vince Russo thinks? It is 2024. Yeah. We stopped caring what he thought when he exposed how crappy is it this job in 1999 slash 2000. Yet every time I have to be like, well, Vince Russo thinks this. Who cares? You might as well tell me what Val Venus thinks. But actually, like how much it really matters. Incidentally, go to valvenus.com. Um... Do you see this? Valvenus.com directs now specifically to a, a raising awareness for trans funds website. <laughs> I did not see it's, that. It's brilliant trolling. Um, thank you, partner, for taking that part of the rant sorry, so I don't I'm have to. No, 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 so that I don't have to. Yeah, yeah, also, no. like, he fucked up TNA as well, so, like... Well, yeah, of course he did. Actually, do you know how many times he messed up TNA? Yeah. Multiple. So because because there are idiots who are running TNA. He was like, man, that, that, that Vince reason. Russo, he's the guy behind the Attitude Era. I was like, has anyone looked at the evidence that has come pokes the Attitude Era of how many times he's got Kretz. things we wrong? We never hear from Chris Chris Kretz. Kretz. Well, he's dead. That's why. Oh, okay. <laughs> My apologies. I didn't <laughs> yeah, know that. He, d- yeah, he died a long time ago. Well, he was the one who did the good work. The two, yeah. the year, that, his was the year to give yeah, him yeah, his, yeah. his credit. But like, it, yeah, people go, like, oh yeah, well, he, me- he messed up TNA again and again and again and again. Can I tell you my favorite Vince Russo story? Go on. So Vince Russo was so bad in TNA and the fans hated Russo so much in TNA that TNA fired Vince Russo and got rid of him. 
But really, he was still in the employment books. He was still writing the shows. And fans knew that he was still running the shows because they were still turned, still bad. still bad. And the only reason it got found out is because Vince Russo was going to send, uh, send the show notes and the show running order to Mike Tenay, and he sent it to Mike Johnson from PW Insider. Great. So Mike Johnson of PW Insider was like, yeah, by the way, Vince Russo is still writing TNA, yeah. and here's the evidence, the email evidence proof. And so, yeah, it was like, yeah, of course Vince Russo's back. That's basic stuff. That's basic stuff. But to, to, that was, it was interesting that I saw that when I got home because I've been thinking about it this whole time. And essentially what it is that's going on with this promo and, and this, in fact, this whole series, whether it's Roman's sort of cross-dresser line, whether it's mm -hmm. this whole idea of, you know, little crybaby, even the words crybaby are this idea of you know what is what a man should and shouldn't be and i and i i think what's so interesting is that you've got two sides of the coin and and how for me what it raises the question of what is masculinity right and i was nervous last week when cody was crying because i know we have a uh, you weren't on the pod, the pod last week but we had a meme we have we have a meme when you do three count and it's like cries and promos and you know it's cody's thing to cry and crying is a yeah well i mean that's different that's not cody i don't know if you know this but that Ch cody Rhodes isn't chad Gable. are you sure yeah. are you sure that i mean it's no, I'm i pretty sure. see where you got confused <laughs> but that's not cody Rhodes. um but like there's this whole idea that like a, a man crying or cody cries too much or it's, it's all all too emotional and i was worried that people were going to start turning on him because he was daring to be vulnerable again because it is still a very unwelcome thing evidence by this comment that we're seeing not just from three so from other people as well that crying isn't uh, an acceptable thing for a real man to do so when the rock starts doing that part of his promo on smackdown i'm like uh oh where are we going and then the rock starts cutting a promo not on cody but on cody's mother how weak do you want to be to be cutting a promo on someone's mum? like it's so it's so emperor has no clothes it's mm -hmm. so you're you're a coward because you're going after the elderly mother of your opponent rather than your opponent themselves you're making a joke out of him because he's crying i also appreciated that he sort of just like it cut, cut back to him just going there he is crying because it kind of again hammered home the idea of what is and isn't sort of masculinity meanwhile you've got roman reigns his tag team partner who is so insecure in his masculinity and his strength and his position that he's having to beat people up to a, to acknowledge him the whole point of the bloodline was i'm going to beat you down until you acknowledge me i need you to acknowledge me and he was i mean roman cried in the middle of the ring of hell in a cell and it was all a part of him going going mad kind of thing this whole business of of who is the real top dog i need you to acknowledge me the fragility in that you're projecting this masculine strength you're making jokes that are cliche and past it and yet you are exposing how how insecure your masculinity is by asking your cousin who's wearing a big versace coat to tell you that he's that you are the most important one mm -hmm. and meanwhile the rock is going yeah, yeah you're the most important one also i'm the final boss and i and we give us as these fancy nicknames like it's it's so and then and then on the other side of that coin you've got cody and you've got seth who literally dresses in haute couture he dresses in like high fashion outrageous expensive shoes that are impractical but look incredible i can't stop thinking about them his outfit this week was amazing he he's 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 floaty in his in his physicality and things like that and you've got cody who cries now when cody the the the, the one thing i kept thinking about last night was cody covered in blood his own blood and dustin's blood saying in front of our an arena full of the hardcore wrestling fans the the like real sports wrestling fans that he needed his older brother the vulnerability of being like i don't need a friend or a partner i need my older brother he, he went into little boy child mode but he's covered in blood that's the most masculine thing i've ever seen that idea of and what that's is wrestling bud right and, and like and and seth rollins wearing these outrageous outfits and like i sometimes wear makeup and eyeliner and things like that and i always call it war paint because i end up feeling more masculine when i'm dressing with my my you know slightly out there loud shirts and makeup and chains and all the rest of it because it feels like it's messing with the idea of what masculinity is and isn't it's fascinating all of this so for cody to be able to go out there cry in the middle of a promo talking about how he wants to make his mother proud and come out this week and be able to be like your mom's really nice and that it that it, it's it's this idea of the good guy and it's so it's so unlike wwe that turned uh 
a vegan into the biggest heel in the world and had people like the nation of domination get booed because they said racism was a, a thing <laughs> like it's so on wwe to have your baby face be like you're the one who's a bit of a wimp to be honest with you yeah i was i used to make fun of wwe for the the, the brian danielson thing because mm. they was like oh here comes captain planet i'm like captain planet was the good guy right <laughs> he, was the, he was the hero of yeah. that show i don't know if you know yeah verminous scum and, and it's just it's it's so it's 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 a fascinating story and i think it deserves to get credit because also when i'm talking about uh who, who, roman reigns being the the alpha right? this you, you might sit here think this is me reading into it and you know hands up i do that that's how i read media books film television whatever but this isn't subtext it's text yeah. he's literally the big dog <laughs> it's alpha stuff it's like it's it's wolf pack of course it is it's 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 brilliant and it deserves so much credit for that the um very well said by the way thanks i uh one I've got a degree <laughs> one of the things i found i find very interesting in all of this is because one of the things that i i find interesting et al is the changes within culture mm. i think people are probably sick of me talking about this but i like the difference that the world has gone through since 2016 i think 2016 was a real like pivotal year in how a lot of things were changed and how a lot of things were perceived and how perceptions were changed which then was exacerbated by the pandemic mm -hmm. and that sort of like made people change and you know like pre-pandemic the if you led with negative things on youtube they would get the most clicks because people just wanted to hate things mm -hmm. the mid 2000s there's this giant wave of negativity on youtube the angry video game nerd was like a popular person because he talked about how things from your childhood that you remember were bad and, and we were like yeah yeah, yeah and it was like yeah you're right these were bad ha 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 chuckle chuckle let's all laugh at the bad things coming out of the pandemic however you led with negative things like you're just negative you're just negative what people wanted was positivity people wanted nice things in life instead because because we all went through a terrible thing a together trauma, yeah. or a trauma together so we all just want to have nice things in life the re i'm to tie that back into all of this the promos that the rocker cut is cutting are the exact same promos he did when he was feuding with cena mm -hmm. you go back and watch those cena promos his promos are i'm a man i'm a real man and you know who likes me real men children like you john cena because you're a little boy and little boys are little crybaby boys and they're not real men and i'm a real man and i eat 20 pancakes before 5 a.m i'm an actual real man and here he's doing those same promos again only this time he's the heel when he was doing those promos in you know 2011 2012 people cheered him mm. people adored him because he was like yeah we are real men and we don't like john cena because he's crap and we boo him because like the little kids like him now the the hero to the kids is the actual hero of this mm. story and the guy who's in there being like you're not a real man real men do this is the baddie mm -hmm. it's a different change in culture it is and it's also i think the other thing that it, is crucial about it is the fact that they they get to have the response the thing with the crossdresser line that really got on my nerves is because it was thrown out there so cliche so casual so nothing and it never seth never had a response to it he was never able to push back on like it's not i'm not i don't dress like this to be a cross-dresser I, I it's not about gender expression it's about just expression in, in artistry and things it's like fashion that. expression yeah he didn't have a pushback and i'm and that's tied into gender expression but that's not when people say like uh, roman is actually being a heel you don't know how heels work they're not interested in having that actual mm -hmm. conversation but that's far more detailed and complicated than we have time for and we're already over time but like in this instance rock Cody cries, Rock calls him out for crying and says, you're not a real man, I'm going to go after your mother. And Cody has a response to it. That's the difference. The, the heel, the bad guy, is getting comeuppance, is being confronted for his fallacies. The emperor has no clothes. It's all of that part of storytelling, which I think is what makes this so good and what makes Cody someone who I, with every fibre of my being, need to see win at WrestleMania and I will be crushed if he doesn't. Do you know, it's, it's yeah. and that's, hey, that's wrestling. And look, Ric Flair was wearing, he had a feathered fringe, he had a Farrah Fawcett hairdo and bleached hair and pink lace robes back in the 70s. You know, Adrian Street, well, I mean, that's a fascinating one. Adrian Street used to camp it up and get more feminine because it would get him more booze. Like, mm -hmm. you know, remember those days? Like, well, it's, it's, again, that's the sign it's, of how far we've It's gone. change of culture. Yeah. It's, it's how things have, have progressed and how yeah. things have changed. But there are some people who are still in that mindset of, and it's a generational thing. Mm. And, and like, uh, you know, hand on heart, I truly believe that The Rock does believe that 
they're crybaby whiny bitches mm. and because he and the only reason i say it is because he was cutting those same promos 15 years ago yeah, right that's clearly who he is mm. and what he truly believes vince russo also probably believes that Piers Morgan believes it when he also says men should not cry at funerals. Piers Morgan believes whatever will make him money. Like this is, but this is, and that's the fallacy of it all. Exactly, and I, I totally get why teenage boys, having been one myself, <laughs> uh, they're idiots. So I totally understand <laughs> why there are some people who like, gravitate towards someone like an Andrew Tate or these people who are just like, this is what masculinity should be. Because they're idiots and they don't know any better and they're a little bit smelly and they are not interested in the actual like, you know, right things within mm-hmm. life. I was one, so I, I, I totally get it. It's when it's adults that I'm like, I think you should, uh, you know, like, maybe you should open up your eyes and, ex- and look at the world a little bit more now. But that's why, like... Again, to use another hashtag woke cliche, representation matters. Like you have to have, you have to, you can't be what you can't see. Like to have Cody Rhodes as your protagonist be this vulnerable example of what masculinity can and should look like. Like to beat the complexity of it all. Like he's a badass. He's like you know strong. He's powerful. He's caring. He's thoughtful. He's all of these things in one. He's respectful, but he doesn't take. He doesn't. He's not a pushover. You need that for a younger generation else they've got nowhere else to go well actually i mean i'm going to correct myself on this one as uh and just black up uh, back up black yakuza 94 here because they've made a point much better than i could have done which is teenage boys are insecure yeah and 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 and, 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 hey, and, and, and why because of toxic masculinity it all ties back patriarchy. it all ties back into it and i was an insecure teenager yeah and it's it, so it, it stands to reason why this idea of what masculinity is so you often put on, runs rife. You put on a mask. You you put on, it's uh, the most true like summation of the human experience I've ever heard is RuPaul when RuPaul says you're born naked and the rest is drag. We all come into this world the same way, and then we figure out ways that we can navigate it because of insecurity. We we shield ourselves from certain things. We project an idea of something. It's all a performance. It's all a character. It's it's a fascinating thought exercise on this wrestling podcast but that is exactly it we're insecure and we are presented with bad stereotypes that that feed into every single aspect of society and we don't have those positive role models that show us that actually there is a way to be all things there is a way to and it's it's cody rhodes and that's why it was great for cody to actually have that little bit of bite to him yeah. here but not lose what makes him cody rhodes yeah. This was not Cody Rhodes cosplaying as The Rock. No. And this got over more than Seth making his diarrhea Dwayne joke mm-hmm. because it wasn't trying to be something it wasn't. Mm. This was just Cody still being Cody. But it was a let you know, to let you know, by the way, I know I cry and everything, but I'm still Cody Rhodes. Oh, he can bitch slap you to heaven. Exactly, yeah. Like I, you know, I'm the guy who left and I started the competition. I actually started, you know, I was part of That's- the revolution. That's why I love him. Yeah. Because because he walked the walk. He in did. Every aspect of his life. He's more CM Punk than CM Punk is. Oh, I just love him so much. <laughs> but we've got like 40 minutes uh, on, on this topic here. Well, it's, it's generational is the thing. It's like, it is this generational. Is, this is the, this is the best WWE has been since the Ashley era for me. This is, this is the most interesting, fascinating, engaging storyline we've seen in literal years and i'm including last year with the bloodline stuff as well which was also generational like it's it's so it, it deserves to be looked at in this way that this storyline specifically is doing such a good job and all my goodwill is going towards it because let me talk about candace the ray later on <laughs> i am um, yeah no, i'll uh, i'll echo that but when i say the attitude era i specifically mean the year 2000 oh yeah we, we, you know hindsight 2020 i've watched literally yeah. everything from 1998 to 2001 Nin- the year 2000 yeah 98 99 don't hold up. Mm-hmm. It's got great characters. It's got some great moments in there. It is carried by Steve Austin and, and the rise of the rock, but it is messy. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2000 is where it gets all. Someone took me to task a little bit in the comments on TLC because they didn't get my joke. But I said 2000 is Can't the relate. But it was the most flawless year in WWE. It was when we were ranking our worst WrestleManias that had WrestleMania 2000 on there. Yeah. I was like, it is a flawless year for WWE. The exception of the biggest show of the year, yeah, and that was my joke as well. Like, well, it's not a flawless year then. I was like, well, it, it was. It's just that that their big show, they really fumbled it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 
Let's get into your thoughts on this subject. Restalk.com forward slash support. We'll read out all of them before we get out of here. This show might run a little long, so I'm going to apologize to our moderating team. Kevin here said, initially, I had no issue with Cody's emotional side, but I was reminded of when he said he was hunting the bloodline, and now I think this side of Cody is well needed. Overall, very good episode of Raw. Love the Sammy Chad dynamic and a good main event. Looking forward to that Sammy Chad uh, talk, because I really like that Mm -hmm. stuff. Will Campbell said, Hi guys, really enjoyed the promo from a story perspective and in a way of a fr- uh, friend group in high school encouraging a friend to torch the ass of someone hmm. stepping to them. Tardis, I know, but the entire segment, including Heyman, gave me so much enjoyment. Just Donnie has been a member for 30 months in a row, said, Small pee pee, Dwayne. <laughs> That's speaking Dwayne's language. Yeah. Uh, Akiko Sanada here said, love this episode of Raw. Cody's promo was great. The match is all delivered, especially DIY versus the Creed. I'm also curious about Sammy and Chad. What do you think about Gable coaching him, but eventually turning on him at Mania? We'll talk about that when we get to yeah. it, uh, when we get to that part of the uh, topic. Kuzu here said, when Cody came out in the black suit, we were all in for a good time. Cody needed this type of promo after the rock concert. Anything el- anything less would have made him look really bad. Very reminiscent of his promo with Jericho. Hope it ends differently. That's exactly it. You needed this Cody promo at this point because of what you did with the rock on Friday. Mm. Also, that black suit was great. He looked a million bucks. Geek of Arabia, Cody's promo had a different kind of bite that I think he badly needed in a war of words against The Rock. Masterful work on his part. Tom Loveday has been a member for 13 months in a row. So the entire Cody, Seth, Rock, Roman build is GM code call-out <laughs> promos. <laughs> hey, look, they work. And and this is one where the rivalry grows week on week. <laughs> WWE got the GM mode cheat on. Charles Berg has been a member for 34 months in a row. Uh, that one take was delightful. It makes WWE the show feel more alive. Great stuff from Cody. Dwayne The Rock has a small Johnson. <laughs> Have a great day, Jam. That it's Jam. It's funny because Johnson means peanuts. Uh, which we all know from Austin Powers. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Sammy Boy said, let me get this straight. Rock talks about Seth's wife and Cody's mum. Cody's response is, you've got a small wee-wee and Seth is silent. (laughs) I think Cody's promo was half good and half exposing. It is all fake. So why believe the tag match? Disappointed by the promo. I think the final boss is a stupid name. Isn't the point of the final boss that he gets defeated by the protagonist? I wanted Cody to be angry. Take out Solo. Tell Heyman I'm coming Friday. Bring the bloodline. You made it personal for the last time. L D S S M H. Well, you can't I think, please everyone. You can't please everyone, but also I think uh, the final boss is a stupid name. It's in the point of a final boss that he gets defeated. Well, yeah, and, it, and he'll get defeated. I I don't doubt that we're not going to have a Cody Rock singles match. Some slam. Yeah, I mean at Summer yeah, Slam, but I also think we're going to have a. Saudi, yeah. I think we're going to have a a, a a Seth Rock match. Yeah, I have a little theory about Seth and yeah, Rock, actually. absolutely. I, Based I, on the Rock constantly talking about uh, making his. I'm going to take disappear. your title disappear. I think. So my, I'm going to fan, I'm fantasy booking. Sorry, it's bad of me to do this, but I'm going to just because I thought about it. If um, if the if the bloodline are to win on night one, which they probably will, you know, for extra peril and all the rest of it, um, bloodline rules as a teaser for it. The Rock costs Seth his match with Drew, makes his title. He didn't mean literally make it go away and in, into the bin. He meant. I'm going to take it off you. Absolutely. And I'm going to hand it to Drew. And then you get that, which works nicely with Drew's storyline of taking advantage of Bloodline interference. The Bloodline interference. I, I said the exact same thing on the Saturday show mm. is Rock pins uh, Seth on night one and on night two, he screws uh, him out of his title match with Drew. Mm-hmm. Drew wins the belt. It works twofold. A, it sets up, you know, lovely bit of drama at the end of night one. But B, the Rock interfering on behalf of someone who's gone against him means that they lose mm. that match which will mean excellent drama when you get into cody versus roman and look if the rock is here and he's on the board and he's doing the best work of his career you should use him to help and i think the rock's gonna have current more talent. matches i think so too i think you know for all that like we were given this you don't need to save wrestlemania cody met reference in the promo like look at the house we didn't need saving and he was right like it was hot it was hot it was gonna be hot he has made it something fascinating to watch generational yeah. like and it's done wonders for him because mm. the rock has not had a great few years in terms of box office he's kind of lost a lot of his sway in hollywood mm. and i think that is one of the reasons if not the major reason that he has gone back to wrestling mm. a world where he is safe and will always be a top name draw and now he's here and he's doing some of the best work and he's making a lot of money for himself. It's like, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. I'll do more matches. 
And Mr. Top has been a member for 14 months in a row. Uh, row said, the one-shot transition was amazing. Really looking forward to WrestleMania. Keep up the good work. Dan, close to being a Grand Jam champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, okay, if I get my jam. Well, you've also got to win jam. Right, there's my Infinity Gauntlet. You got jam in the jar? Yep, done it. Oh, yeah, you did win that. Of course you won it last year. Uh, And a Royal Jamble. Haven't needed to. I've been the champion. (laughs) Because that's the one thing I've not won. Mm. I don't think my GM counts. It's gonna. Because it's only something that me and Pete can beat for. Too late. You've added me to the picture. It's gonna count. (laughs) It's the Infinity Gauntlet. Right, well, let's get into the show itself. We have gone way over time here. We've actually got quite a bit to dive into with this show. Um, I, I made this joke on the, the edited review. A talk-heavy episode mm. was this episode of Raw. Uh, under an hour's worth of wrestling on a three-hour show, and a lot of that wrestling takes place in the commercial break. Mm-hmm. I agree with you that wrestling is more than just wrestling. I need a better balance. I didn't feel the need for it this week. I felt it when Seth and Drew had a promo segment. Yeah. And I was like, Ugh, I there are places I will say where the format of how they produce their wrestling, and in fact, we'll get into it very yeah. quickly, but um, the format needs a shuffle so that they can rearrange certain things, I feel. So Jay and Jimmy opened the show here. They talked about this being the third brother versus brother match in WrestleMania history. Uh, 20 years apart. Oh, no, 15 years apart each. So, you know, there's yeah. this whole. So, this is the. Um, that the people love it. Hey, hey, it's got to have the, the thingy because it was a... It's got to be a triple threat. Like, it's got to be the, because it, it's like... And then there's a one for 15. And then if you want to, you could at this point do even one for 20. It was, mm. you know, Owen and Owen and Brett, 10. Yeah. 25 was Matt and Jeff. And now it's 40. That's 15 years. So why don't we do a triple threat for the world title? And, yeah. You know, whatever. It's coincidence. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. It's uh, it's coincidence. Um, also, it ignores The Undertaker and Kane. And I, and I will not stand for that slander. <laughs> they did it twice at WrestleMania. Uh, exposing the business. I This this feud, I feel, is cold at yeah. the moment. Um, and I think the reason for that is that they started it at SummerSlam, but wanted to do the match at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Didn't know how they were going to delay this, so just moved them to separate shows. And three weeks out from WrestleMania, were like, and now they're feuding again. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's enough. And I don't think this segment here was enough to try and salvage that, particularly because Jimmy said that Jay left the bloodline first. Yeah. Which is not true. Uh, look at the live reactions that we did that exposed that that is not the truth, Ellen. Like, yeah. actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. It um, was absolutely Jimmy who hit the first super kick. Yeah. And we had this whole build to jay's decision of yeah. whether he was going to leave the bloodline or stay with the group i don't think this is helping and then jimmy went back in the bloodline and they made yeah. no reference to SummerSlam and how he cheated him out of the world title they made no reference to him cheating him out of gunther like this was a this was a revisionist history promo that didn't work but jay uso is massively over and when he does that entrance at wrestlemania it is gonna hit yeah uh well that's it yeah entrances are always going to be over yeah uh jay said this is a dream match for him and it's going to happen at wrestlemania 40 solo caused a distraction so jimmy landed a super kick and cody ran down for the save it is it's a shame that it's not in any way tied into the main bloodline story like in no way of these things intersecting weird it feels like it's on its own island of irrelevancy (laughs) (laughs) i think it's so weird that it's not yeah, I that do. That is not part of this rock and Roman storyline. Mm. Because it should be. It should it's be. It's all part of it. It's, if anything, Jay is more slotted into this than Seth is. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, where we are. We got a video promo for Nia versus Becky, which will be your main event. And Paul Heyman talked to Adam Pierce, and he said that Jimmy and Solo, they weren't supposed to be here tonight. That wasn't what they, you know, they, that wasn't Bloodline mm. decided. That wasn't a rock decision. It wasn't a Roman decision. They did that on their own accord. I am here, though, but I, I do have some business to attend to, mm-hmm. as we got later in the Cody segment. He also said that his flight was delayed, but you didn't see Adam Pearce firing him, did you? <laughs> like his flight wasn't delayed. It was late. And he wasn't going to make it. Just as for Shinsuke. <laughs> we then got, in a not a WrestleMania qualifying qualifier, as it is on SmackDown... <laughs> It is just a WrestleMania 40 qualifier. It was DIY versus the Creeds. Julius is nuts in how great he is. <laughs> yes, he is, yeah. I like, and this is this is how great this match was. The crowd weren't that hot for it at the oh start. Oh my god, I was so upset. Yeah. Because DIY have actually done a really good job of getting over, mm-hmm. um, you know, because they've been putting them out on TV, just having great matches, so they are going to get over. 
the creeds haven't been on tv for a while nope. so it kind of makes sense that the crowd aren't incredibly hot for mm-hmm. them also their new theme is but oh my god in an era of terrible theme music their theme is the worst yeah but these four work together so great because julius is this freak of nature mm-hmm. who's just incredible when he did that deadlift superplex yeah the, the, sort of the claudio one like it was yeah. so so good there's a moment when he had champered an ankle lock and then Gargano charged at him and he just casually one-armed power bombed him while yeah. still holding on to Tommaso Ciampa. But Brutus, the great thing about Brutus is that Brutus just looks at what Julius does and then just does the yeah, same thing. Well. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like anything you can do, I can also do. Mm. It was like it's awesome. And then you've got Champa and Gargano who know how to do PWG style tag matches. So they just have PWG style tag matches in a WWE ring. And it's awesome. Mm. I mean, this this match frustrated me because on the one hand, I thought the work was really, real great. And also, I mean, I've shared my love of the creeds as well. I, you know, me and a singlet and, a, and a, an Olympic style wrestler, a mat based wrestler is always going to be one that takes a box for me. When he did that power bomb and it didn't go right to begin with, like that was a that was a slip up that was so masterfully fixed. It was just mm-hmm. like, oh, I'll just drop the ankle lock and it's caused so much pain that it hurts you. And then I will do a power bomb and then I'll just pick that ankle lock right back up. But more crucially, it was I watched it back. It was Johnny Gargano slipping out of the of mm-hmm. the move that made it go wrong. He saved him pretty quickly and safely. That's the sign of a damn good wrestler. Yeah. Um, the crowd were chanting for Pat McAfee at the beginning, man. They weren't not watching the match. They were not watching the match and chanting for the commentator who had to acknowledge them to shut them up. Like because It was so frustrating. And I think a large part of that is down to the bad booking of this tag division where the the titles have been held hostage by the Judgment Day for far too long. The Judgment Day haven't needed them. They haven't really been in the tag division. We had a great match at Elimination Chamber, to their credit. But um, all year they've been away from the tag division. Meanwhile, the tag division is got loads of great talent on it and here's an example of what would happen if we had a competitive division i know that you don't always need a belt for a a division but we could have done with them in in the division yeah we and it's why we need to split them up and maybe we'll get a nonsense bit of two belts at wrestlemania i think that's what we're getting i think we hate it it's gash but i I, honestly i think it's one of the better ideas to split the belts up than just having a match that is just for the raw belts or or a two-fold match one of those for the raw belts one of the smackdown belts I think the idea of two teams pulling down the different belts, I think is actually a much better finish. I, I had a whole idea of Sammy and Kevin being like, right, we're going to defend these belts. And then there being a SmackDown GM, which we eventually did get being like, cool, I want belts on my show as well. So you are going to defend the SmackDown belts on SmackDown and you're going to develop the Raw belts on Raw. There's a brand split, make it make sense. But, you know, that's not what we've got. Uh, it's gimmicky. That's my problem with that. Yeah. It's oh, it's 100% gimmicky, but it's a way to split these belts off mm-hmm. uh, and then rebrand them so they're back to these? the WWE Tag Team Championships and the World, World. Tag Team Championships proper, like ruthless aggression mm. era style uh, naming conventions. And I, I think that's what we're going to end up getting. But this was really good. It was a very, very good match. Yeah. I really it, it, enjoyed it. It was in really, spite of it all. Got really great by the end, in fact. I thought the, the creeds were awesome. Uh, I've written here that match went nearly 20 minutes which was like all of the wrestling on Smackdown this week (laughs) this was also the match where I realized that the format is broken because especially at the beginning I didn't really care and then there there was a bit where it's like okay and now we're going to commercial so everything that takes place before that it's like everything that you say before you say the word but doesn't count everything that happens in a match before the first commercial break doesn't count I don't Mm. need it so we need to rearrange the show I'd rather we just have the entrances and then a commercial break than do this pretend bit of wrestling where I'm supposed to believe that maybe one of them are going to pin fall Judgment Day were chatting with Andra day and saying hey this is an exclusive club I, jd mcdonough jumping in and be like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he fought well hard to get that spot uh priest and andrade had a bit of a stare down which i thought was quite cool uh and then priest had a go at mcdonough for not beating ricochet last week so they make dom versus ricochet for tonight mm-hmm. i'm excited for a uh, post wrestlemania so andrade can have something to do i feel like they should have kept him on television in the jade they, they did there. well no he's on television no, they, they they kept him off TV for like six weeks and yeah. then just brought him back. What's he doing? Uh, the Way beat the Party Girls in a very, very short match. Neither team got entrances. Uh, Katana landed and hurt her knee while Indy Hartwell was in the ring. And Candice LeRae tagged herself in. And this rubbish referee did not stop Candice LeRae from lock- yeah. and, like She locked in this wicked like submission. Oh, great. And the referee was like, are you going to submit? I was like, just two seconds ago, you were saying that she could barely stand you up. Pulled you pulled Indy Hartwell You, you were pushing her. Indy Hartwell away. Yeah. Negligent. Uh, negligent referee. Uh, but I thought it was a very, very good finish. 
in particularly because I thought it was so much better than last week. So it is. It was a good finish, and the, the, I think people misunderstood what I was saying last week. Uh, and there was obviously all that what aboutery with um, Christian Cage. It does does stuff. not add up for me. I'm it, sorry. Well, here's the thing. Basically, is that the reason that the Candice line last week was so bad is because it came out of nowhere. Because yeah. it was just like what, and it was badly written, and it was sorry, Candice, badly delivered. If it was part of a week long a week's long storyline if this came out in week five maybe you have two separate storylines going on you have candace getting mad that her and indy aren't winning stuff so she gets a bit of a ruthless streak she starts doing stuff like this which is was really effective and oh my god that crab looked amazing Mm -hmm. michael oku's quaking um it was if we got more of that meanwhile elsewhere we've got maxine dupree leaning into the getting booed for not being good stuff for being like look i'm learning on the job i my, i and, and she mentions that she lost her brother much like cody bringing his mother in so it's fair game she, i lost my brother it made me realize that life is short and life is precious and i want to do this and i want to honor him and she makes that part of her gimmick and she she tries to get better week after week and it, and it's all because of her family and then both of these things dovetail into one segment where it's a match between the, the Maxine who's trying her best to get better and the Candice who's becoming ruthless and a bit of a dick and then you have the exact same segment, then it works perfectly fine. It works ar- arguably brilliant. They dovetail quite elegantly. It was nonsense last week and it came out of nowhere and was there a response this week? No, there wasn't. There was just a continuation of the story which was told in a weird way. You know the film Passengers? Yes. That is a film that sh- should be reordered. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where if it's you... mad that it isn't. Right. And that's how I feel about this. Yeah. I know. I, I completely agree. Yeah. If I may bury Vince Russo some more. <laughs> Please, the floor is yours. <laughs> because this is, I, I think, I was because I watched your you know, uh, pizza review last week. Yeah. I, was, I was cuddled up in bed, yeah. um, sweating out this fever that I had. And I, you know, I, I had some, some thoughts and feelings on this, but my thoughts and feelings were the same as yours. Mm. Like My issue I had with Candace's line wasn't that she said the line, is that there's no there was no context for the line there was mm. no no one even knew that maxine had a brother no because like, it's never been part of her character it was just out of the blue and it didn't sit right with people and i totally get that in tna there was a angle in which kurt angle wanted a rematch with samoa joe and joe wasn't going to give him the rematch so on an episode of impact samoa joe arrived to the building with his girlfriend Never been on TV before. Mm-hmm. Never been referenced in any promos. Was this a shoot girlfriend? No. Okay. Just arrived with a girl and they were like, oh, Samoa Joe's arrived with his girlfriend. And the closing angle of the show was Kurt Angle putting the ankle lock on this girlfriend to get Samoa Joe to agree to the rematch. Right. And everyone at the time was like, well, why should I care? I don't even know who she is. Mm. And then she never appeared on TV again. She was literally she was just, a MacGuffin. She was a MacGuffin to get to a point. And then Vince Russo had been like, bro, why did no one care when I tried to put the broad in the ankle lock? No one cared about the set the current angle Samoa Joe thing. Because no one cared. Because who, who is, that is your she? your Vince impression? It's, actually, I think you'll find it was a pretty immaculate Vince I was going to say, that's the best impression you've ever done. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Well, you, it turns out you can actually do one. I could do very good impressions. Thank you very much. Disagree. <laughs> so do I. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, I, it, that's, it's the exact same thing here. The reason why the Candice LeRae line didn't work mm. last week is because you can't just say you've got a dead brother. Yeah, you need to have a reason for people to care about that line being exactly. said, as opposed to just saying it. You can't just put a girlfriend in an ankle lock and expect me to care about it. I think I've got that fridge magnet. <laughs> It's our next bit of merchandise. Yeah. You can't just put a girlfriend in an ankle lock. I expect me to care, bro. Uh, then we got the Cody promo, and then we got Jey Uso to telling. Then I Cody, took a cold shower and then continued to watch Raw. Um, Jay told Cody that he shouldn't go alone. It's too dangerous. Yeah, you should go alone. Uh, take this. Take this sword. Um, and said so he'll have his back on Friday. It's a Legend of Zelda reference. Oh, sorry. Um, they do the Pat video gimmick on Pat doing Jay's entrance. You literally turned your monitor around to show me that you were watching this and had a disgusted look on your face. Yeah. <laughs> then this spoilers. This show features the one and only example of this working for me. Yes. Yeah. This, this, oh, yeah. Absolutely. We're gonna get there. Ricochet beat JD McDonough. The story here is that he is now two for two against Judgment Day members, mm-hmm. and he will be able to go three for two when he beats uh, Mysterio again next week. Are they doing it again next week? Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's Ricochet versus Mysterio next week. Oh, um, yeah, versus uh, Dominic versus JD even next ah, week. Okay, so but not in the gauntlet, so it's different. No, it's different. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, sure, Jam. Here's 
my favorite bit of this show. Should we do them all together? I think we need to do this yeah. all together. Obviously, the Cody stuff was great. Yeah. Loved the Cody stuff. I thought the DIY Creed match was excellent. Mm -hmm. I thought the main event was really, really yeah. fun. This, though, I loved. Mm. And it was actually my favorite thing on this show. Because I was it very surprised by this. Caught me off guard. Yeah. And I love it. And I think I know where it's going. So, Sammy has got a contract signing with Gunther. And he's walking backstage and he bumps into Chad Gable, who he beat in the gauntlet match last week. Boo hoo. Kid cried. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, man, you know, really like appreciate what we did in the ring last week. Thank you. You really pushed me to my limit. I, and I think that was, that was really good. I'm, I'm really excited for WrestleMania. And Chad's like, yeah, you know, cool. I, yeah, I, 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 I really appreciate it. it. Yeah, I'm, 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 glad, you know, I'm glad we had the match. You know. He was he was like quite brusque with it, which I'm like I'm the same. If I've lost you, like I've wanted to win, go away. Yeah, and it was like that, and he's clearly bothered by this. And Sammy's like, "What? Well, are we all right? Are we are we cool?" And Chad goes, "Look, I I get it. It's just it meant more to me." And Sammy like almost stopped him before he could finish saying his catchphrase to be like, "No, no, no, you can't say that." Because I've also got a family. Like I know he made your kid cry, but like my kid, like my kid cries when I lose matches, and I've got to go home and talk to my kid after I don't win things. So you can't just say that it means more to you because you have a kid that cries. I've got a kid that cries. So what is this actually about? And Chad stops. He pauses, and he looks at Sammy and says, "I don't think you can beat Gunther." And off he goes. And off he walks. And Sammy has this real look of realization on his face where he also thinks this. And he has been thinking it mm. all week, but hasn't really been able to verbalize it. He hasn't really understood like what this feeling is. And it was in this moment, he was like, oh, that's the feeling I've currently got. So, so then... So before you go away, can I just say, I, I forgot that Sammy's family were in the crowd in Montreal. Yeah. So I forgot that they had that literal exact moment of his family not seeing it. Which, why didn't they mention that at any point earlier? But at least they're doing it now. And actually, yeah. this was well, more effective. I think because you, you save it for this moment yeah. here. Yeah. Where it's like, you can't just play the family cards. Because I, and it, it, it's not just like, I also have a family that get upset. It's like, oh no, we have footage of it. Like, yeah. I, they, of Roman screaming in his wife's face. Yeah. And so we have the contract signing with Sammy and Gunther. And Gunther's there and he's all suited and booted. And he's like, why is this homeless man uh, in the ring? Yeah, and he Why? looked. He looked like a, yeah. it's Sammy's McFoley. Why are you not dressed for the occasion yeah. like this? But he's not doing it because he's Gunther, and he's like he's doing it in a mocking way because mm. Gunther knows that Sammy can't beat him mm. because he's already beaten him, and I really wish that was part of this story. But we'll get to that in a minute. He'd been for the IC title last year. They had a match for the IC title last year. Well, and Sammy. Says like, oh, you you also think that I can't beat you? Well, get what you, the Usos thought that I couldn't beat them either in the main events of WrestleMania last year, and and I did, and I beat them. And people have always thought that I I couldn't beat people, but but I always have. So I I think I can do. And Gunther is there just chuckling away, and it's like I really think you should listen to your new friend Chad, because these fans also don't think you can beat me. So I'll I'll sign, and I'm going to give you a hell of a being a WrestleMania. And he signs a contract and leaves. And Sam was like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I want you to look at me in the eyes again because I know that I can beat you. And Kunther just laughs him off again. And Sammy walks to the back. And Michael Cole has this line where he said, does Sammy actually believe this? Or is he trying to convince himself this is the truth? We'll talk about the, the bit with uh, Awesome Truth in a bit because later on in the show, Sammy, like, it's almost like he's been walking backstage in SmackDown 3 looking for Taz. <laughs> and instead he finds Chad Gable. And he walks up to him and was like, I need you to tell me. I need you to tell me right now. Why do you not think that I can beat Gunther? This has been playing on his mind. Why do you think I cannot beat Gunther? And Chad says, because last week when you were wrestling me, you were always looking for the window of opportunity. And you found that window of opportunity and that's how you beat me. You cannot find that window of opportunity with Gunther because he will not provide you too with good. one. He's too good. You are not mentally ready to face Gunther at WrestleMania. You're not mentally ready to beat Gunther at WrestleMania. If you don't change that, you can't beat him. 
And now we have found the Mickey for our Rocky story. Give it to me in Boss Baby Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey was Rocky's trainer. Okay. And Coach Gable. Yeah, exactly. So you got Rocky being like, I don't really know how to beat a ball. I don't really know how to beat him. And then you got Mickey being like, Rocky, you bum. You don't need to fight him. You need to punch him like this. You need to write the right hook. The right hook. You need to punch this. Grab me this side of me. You gotta punch this beat. That's what Chad's gonna be now. He's going to be the Mickey for Sammy's Maybe Rocky. for our uh, 85,000 stream, we should just watch all the Rocky <laughs> movies in a row. It's what the people want. We might as well get some charity out of it. It's it's not my fault, though, no. that Rocky is, just like, <laughs> is, the, no, is in, the only movie that wrestling has seen. I'm being facetious doing a bit, because this was incredibly effective. I loved this so much. Mm. I thought it was such a great turn on what happened last week. Mm-hmm. And clearly always the plan always the destination for us to get to this point that's why we had all of those chad promos leading up to it of like this means more to me training like and i'm training cool, yeah i i just absolutely adore all of this because last week i, I even i even sent in an ultra chat you did? last week you did? to be like i'm i really wish that it was chad that mm. won because i love sammy but sammy's not the guy that i want to see beat gunther right now chad is mm-hmm. But now we've got a way to get Chad involved in this story. Mm-hmm. I think I'd still prefer it to be Chad uh, that faces Gunther. I, still don't, I don't think Sammy's going to win. I, it's Rocky too, though. So he has to win. It's a your expectation. I mean, I guess. But, you know, if, if he doesn't win, then I'm going to question whether Triple H has seen Rocky too as well. So my thing with the idea of Sammy losing, and I did have a question. I, I, I think you might as well keep on Gunther at this point and there's still a way to build it and give it to Chad. Or maybe or maybe it becomes Chad and Sammy then have a feud together and it's... But then Chad never gets to get it off. I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm, they, they've done such a good job with the Chad and Gunther story that it's hard to extricate them. In the same way that finishing the story now feels a, a Roman thing yeah. as well. I, um, I'm, I'm just going to push back on you slightly that they've done a really good job with this uh, Chad and Gunther story because they, uh, they started something in the summer of last year then stopped. Um, I have filled in the blanks and created a really good story with okay. Chad and So you've yeah. done a really good job I'm with the Chad. I've done a job on myself. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you've yeah. done a great job. Thank with you so job. much. Thank you for admitting that. Uh, no, I... I, um, I also... like I, I've said it before that I think Sammy is uh, ready for the world title picture and I wish he was having this conversation about the world title. But... Sammy Zayn is one good promo away from making me believe he's going to win the world championship. That's just who he is. Mm-hmm. He's so good at it. That... You know, he could lose the intercontinental thing and then this is his whole journey. He goes for the whole year being like, why can't I get the win? I don't know. Like, I I, I like, I've gone from being underwhelmed and, and you know, I was never going to be disappointed between the Sammy and, and good the match to now being like, oh, not only what happens at WrestleMania, but let's say Sammy does win. What happens next? Mm-hmm. And that's the crucial question for the intercontinental championship. It's not, we had a generation of people being like, I'm going to return this belt to what it was when it was held by Shawn Michaels. Well, you don't need to anymore because Gunther's done it. What do we do with this belt next? What do we do with the person who beats Gunther? And I have an answer to that question now with Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. That is an interesting development. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I thought this was great. Mm-hmm. I really, really like this. I, as I said, this is my favorite thing on the show because it was something I was not expecting. And I'm, and I'm really excited to see what happens yeah. now at WrestleMania. So one of the other things that people really enjoyed about this show is this shot. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sammy, when he leaves the ring, the camera follows him backstage. And he walks through the curtain, walks through Gorilla, and he's walking through production. And he walks past Regeneration X. Mm-hmm. And Regeneration X are having a little chat about an uh, awesome truths match with Indusher. Indusher walk past them. They have a little thing. Truth does some comedy. And then Miz is like, come on, we've got to go do our match now. And Awesome Truth then walk back the route that Sammy has just walked through production, through Gorilla, through the curtain, and do their full entrance. And it was all one mm. singular shot. It's not a tracking shot. It was a, it was a following shot. Because mm-hmm. um, it was not on a dolly or anything like that. Yeah. But it was just the camera followed it's Sammy to the back. It was, it was a bit West Wing. Mm. And it was just like you followed him all the way to the back, stopped, and then followed them all the way back to the ring. Very, very cool. And yeah. so unpro wrestling. Yeah. 
And I really, really, I thought it was so cool. I did too. It's also, it created this connected world. I know it sounds silly, but there's this whole idea that, do you remember there was a Titan Tron uh, set that you could buy back in the 90s that you took your wrestler and you placed them and they had a little magnet or something and yeah. it would play their theme? <clears throat> That's how I imagine the wrestlers arriving in the arena. They just sort of spawn out of nowhere. Are they all just hanging around in a gorilla? This kind of like sandbox WWE world where it's like, I can see the journey that these wrestlers have to go on was quite thrilling in a way. Mm. It was like, oh, peek back behind the curtain and see that actually, no, it makes... It, it, all of these things where it's like the promo chain still exist and they can be quite frustrating and what happens in the arena and what happened in the backstage world feel completely separate. But there was something about this shot that allowed you to be like, off goes Sammy, he's going to stew back towards his locker room. Meanwhile, the Awesome Truth have been getting ready to come and do their match, so they're on their way and now they're ready to go and their music is hit. It just kind of filled in a weird blank that I didn't realize yeah. had existed, or or rather I did, but I didn't care. One of the suspension, the same with, as the as the floating camera that nobody can see when they're having their private conversations. Yeah. Like there's certain conventions that I've kind of accepted, and this was a really interesting addition to that. Yeah, yeah. I thought it, it it kind of fleshes out this world. Yes. Uh, then we had the awesome, because we awesome truth, which out with DIY, and awesome truth then took on Indusha in a WrestleMania qualifier. I've been enjoying our truth. I, I feel like WWE have lost interest mm -hmm. a little bit because we were supposed to be building to Awesome Truth versus the Judgment Day, and it feels like they then got cold feet on that. We're like, uh, put in four other teams in a, and a ladder, and I thought Babyface Miz has been very, very enjoyable. I've been, wow. in, I've been enjoying this, and I've been enjoying Ask Some Truth. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, I'm with you on the book. Yeah, so um, you know how earlier you said like everything you say doesn't matter until you say the but? Mm -hmm. But when they did their entrance here, I had a full flashback to be like, oh, that's why I hate these guys. Yeah, I hate them. I hate, of course, I hate this team. This team sucked in 2011. And this, when they did the dual rap, I'm like, yes, they're lame. Yeah, you're, of course, they suck. They're lame and they're cringe and they're corny. This theme is cringe. I'm with and, Solomon. And they're for kids. And I, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. And then they had a pretty naff match with Indusher and they won. Yeah. There were two former WWE champions in this segment and it sure didn't feel like And an it. NWA champion, lest we forget. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, so there were several things wrong with this for me. First of all, I, I agree with you on the entrance where it's like, I don't really like R-Truth's theme. It, it's always got on my nerves. And I, and, and R-Truth, I think, has been brilliant. And I think Miz has been brilliant. You know me, I'm a Miz apologist. Uh, so it was, it was a, like, a, oh, this is a shame. This is a reminder kind of thing. But, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I will I will just, if I may, pull a Tempest because Michael Cole said, been a great tag team over the years, these two. Um, <laughs> fact check, fact check. Uh, they were a team for a couple of months in 2011. There's no over the years about it. Fact check. Thank you very kindly. Yeah. They were, uh, they were put together because The Rock needed someone to beat at Survivor Series. Precisely. Um, then the match. My end share criticism is pretty much the same as the Creed and indeed the women's division in general. Because if they're not on telly, they're not given any story or character. How am I supposed to care? I, this was a, a foregone conclusion. Um, so I didn't really, you know, I, I wasn't fussed. And when I was doing my research into how many times the Awesome Truth had tagged together, I saw this match was three minutes long and I was like, oh, thank God for that. But... Um, I will, what I, the credit that I will give to this match is that it was the one and only time that the Pat Stration or whatever it's called um, was actually useful because I completely missed the end. Yeah. And I think a lot of us did because they framed it weirdly. And uh, we got to see the, the circle of him falling on. See, I, I, thought, you, I thought you were going to say about the Otis uh, bit. No, that was also quite funny. Yeah. Because the, the finish to this was that Sanger elbowed Truth in the face and it knocked him out and he fell into a pin on Veer. And it was limp. Yeah. yeah. I didn't love it. Going from having been like, oh, I'm really enjoying this silly, awesome truth run that they've somehow convinced me I want to see them become tag team champions for a night in the sort of Zack Ryder wins in the Continental title vein um, to this. Is that how? That's a yeah. shame. You cut, or some, sometimes the plates fall down. Uh, we got a video of Punk's return. He said he will be at WrestleMania. Mm. He's also going to be on the show next week. And The Rock's going to be on the show in two weeks' time. He's on the go-home show for WrestleMania. Oh, we're getting spoiled. And then we had this... So Drew came out for a promo. And as he's making his entrance, Seth immediately yeah. uh, comes out. TLDR uh, of this segment. 
it did not move the story forward. Yeah. I thought that both men cut good promos. But it's not like I was at the end of it like, oh man, cannot wait for this match. No, it was. Uh, there's not a lot to talk about it really. It was bland. It was repeating a lot of the same things. And I'm far more interested in two separate feuds that they're both having rather than the feud they're having together. I'm far more interested in what Drew's doing with Punk. I'm far more interested in what Seth's doing with The Rock. Like it is bland, and that's a failure, I think, on the, on yeah. the part of because there's a way to do all of these. And I, and I and I was enjoying it. Like I I'm enjoying them separately. Why am I not enjoying them together? Because like even Seth stuff. Like what ground is Seth cover here? You won the title in an empty warehouse in 2020, and Done then the one. fans came back. And what did you do? Nothing. It's like I know we've we've been over mm. this you've been over this punk's been over this like people have been over this with with drew mcintyre and st- what did drew say i'm not the focus of you right now because you're all focused on the bloodline i know because we've covered this for the last couple of weeks yeah, as we well like this segment really did accomplish nothing yeah. uh can i though mention something that, that i thought was quite funny um so i there's a, a, a five live show it's now a BBC Sounds podcast uh, by Ellis James and John Robbins. And John Robbins is really into CrossFit. And there's a CrossFit thing on at the moment. <laughs> it was like a, maybe last week or so. A CrossFit championship or a CrossFit tournament or, or something along these lines. A CrossFit cup, whatever whatever it is. And so John Robbins was talking about this on the podcast. And he said, oh, yeah, and there was a wrestler that came out to do the, the introduction for it. Was it CrossFit Jesus? And he was like, yeah, it's a WWE guy. And one of the producers was like, is it Kurt Angle? And he was like, no, no. He was like a world, some champion or something. He had a, he had a belt or, or something like that. And, oh, what was his name? And he Googled what his name was. And he went, Seth Rollins. Right? Okay, that, that's what the guy's name was. And then the producer was like, I, I was only going to say Stone Cold. is the only other name I could think it might be. He was like, yeah, Seth Rollins. Anyway, he came out. He's so annoying. <laughs> he was so, so irritating and so annoying and really quite unpleasant. And then he just sort of dropped doing his wrestling thing and just wished everyone good luck. And he was actually quite nice. Mm. And I was like, isn't that a Seth Rollins promo? Yeah. Isn't that always my criticism of Seth Rollins promos? He comes out, does crap comedy, and is this character that I find is quite annoying, and then just cuts regular promos where he just becomes a lad. And I'm like, oh, that's so much better. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like, he, he did really well the other week when he cut the crap and got to the point. Yeah. So let let him do that. Can I also give you my... I didn't give you my uh, Oscar hot take last oh. week either. Go on. So... Here's my hot take from the Oscars. I took a real umbrage when Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito looked at Michael Keaton and said, you beat us as Batman. Yeah, because he didn't. Because Arnold Schwarzenegger did not face Michael Keaton as Batman. No, justice for George Clooney. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. My, that's my Batman. That, that, I, absolutely. Like, yeah. like where's, where's the respect for George Clooney? Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll tell you where it let's is. N- let's not pretend that you faced Michael Keaton. Maybe he thinks he did. I'll tell you where that respect is. It's in the Flash movie. <laughs> Uh, Becky cut a promo on uh, Naya. Uh, but he's like, why take the risk? Because all I know is taking risks. And then the New Day beat Alpha Academy. Uh, they had a fun match and they did a pat video gimmick because Otis used his belly at one point. Yeah, and this match was fine. I yeah. think I expected more going in, so I was a bit disappointed in it, but yeah. Uh, Becky and Liv had a chat backstage. Seth and Cody had a chat backstage. And then we got our main event of Becky Lynch versus Nia Jax. Um, Jax, I thought, had a tactical error at the start of this. Because she, there was a table and it, it broke. So then she started getting loads of chairs out. And she was just p- sliding them into the ring to Becky Lynch. And I'm like, ah, yeah. oh, Nia, when you get back in the ring, Becky's now got 10 chairs. Mm. Tactical error, I think, on, on Jax's part there. But she did hit Samoa and drop onto those chairs. Crowd were trying for the tables. Nia Jax did the my whole spot, but didn't say the line bar. Minus five stars. <laughs> uh, Jax had the match won, but uh, Becky Lynch rolled to the outside. So she landed on her feet. And then she hit a manhandle slam off the apron through a table. Nia got up at eight. So Becky hit the leg drop through the announcer table and got the win. This match was already up against it for me because uh, Last Man Standing is one of my least favorite stipulations along with I Quit. Um, And they're limited by what they can do on PG commercial heavy television. Also, there have been so many plunder matches lately across various companies that like when on Raw, we just get kendos and tables and chairs. Oh my. It's a little bit desensitized for me now. Mm-hmm. So it actually turned out 
far better than I think it had any right to. Um, what a surprise that though that Becky and Nia have a good chemistry together. We've seen it all year, um, and Nia's on continuing her good run. I thought it was a good match. I really enjoyed myself with it. Um, I really liked the chair bulldog spot. She had a tactical error there, um, which is a fair one to call out. But there was a thing of Nia setting it up because she wanted to use the chair to sort of drop. I mean, she she unfolded it. Mm-hmm. She wanted to drop Becky on it, but then she didn't get the opportunity to. So Becky then used it to her advantage and bulldogged Nia on it. And then when Becky went to the top rope, Nia used it to her advantage. And it felt like, oh, that's why that chair's there. You know, sometimes they set up... In WrestleMania 17, the, the Dudley boys set up four tables. And it's like, why have you done that? Oh, you're doing it to set up a spot later on. Yeah. It, sometimes you're just setting things up for the purpose of yeah. someone else using them later. Chekhov's tables. Yeah, I like them. I like to to know why my wrestlers are about. To, what do you want to do with that? Mm-hmm. And I thought that was there, so I really want to give it credit for that. Um, it was a very simple thing, but um, I quite liked it. And also, for me, at the end, I would have flipped the two moves around a little bit. I know that Becky's getting over this leg drop thing. That it's mm-hmm. actually Nia did the leg drop thing, or did Becky do the leg drop? I don't know. Either way, for me, I'd have had her do a leg drop on the table and have her stand up at eight and then find a way to get them both on the ladder and do the manhandle slam off the ladder because that would have looked sick. Because that's where, that's where you're going to struggle to find a convincing way of Nia getting leg drop through a table and then them working their way up to the apron. Just want to have another together. Because I, I actually thought this was much better way this way around because Nia Jack stands up at eight and is basically just stumbling around not yeah. really knowing she, she doesn't even realise that she stood up at eight. And her head bashes into the table, that's yeah. Fair. But I just think the visual of that also if you, the manhandle slam being the thing that's gonna put away Rhea Ripley as a threat. Like he beat Andre the Giant with that move. Like the idea that like she uses the manhandle slam off the table mm. or off the ladder through the table and that's it she's done for rather than she went off the apron through the ladder and sorry off the off the apron through a table onto the floor and it still stood up at eight nigh as powerful i get it i just thought the visual would have been better yeah but, i don't know the visual of becky jumping off a ladder yeah that's still sick yeah. like yeah. it was still good it's just that my way's better yeah. <laughs> oh okay well you know when you put it that way yeah. I, I guess you're absolutely right uh, and then she had a stare <laughs> down with rhea ripley after the match oh, I, I love it yeah i love it once it like now that the Nia stuff and the Liv stuff is all done and we can just focus on Becky and Rhea, mm. I think that's what we need for the next two weeks now. Yeah. Is some real focus on this being a story about Becky and Rhea mm-hmm. and not the extras around them. Yeah. I think I understand the idea that, the, the you know, she's like Seth Rollins in the way that, or, or the Cody schedule where like they're going to work their ass off right the way through and it's like, is that a mistake? I like the idea of Becky not knowing how to quit. Um, but also yeah. here we go we can get tasty yeah i agree uh well so anyway i get the show four out of five yeah i i yeah yeah so it's a thumbs up show, show. Yeah. i had a really good time with this one let us know what you thought we'll have a poll up very shortly and you can let us know what you thought of this episode of raw uh meanwhile we're going to shout out some of our patreon pledge hammers head on over to patreon.com forward slash rest talk to get a whole heap of bonus content tomorrow will be after dark which we're going to be recording tomorrow afternoon so you can check that out and then next week you'll be myself and olivia davis reviewing payback 2014 oh, which features Blue Tista yeah. uh, and also John Cena and Bray Wyatt having an awesome last man standing match uh, and what else on the show Wade Barrett versus RVD I literally watched it yesterday Wade Barrett versus RVD for the IC title mm. uh, Cesaro versus Sheamus um, and is there no shield stuff is that not what you're doing well yeah shield versus evolution ah right with Blue Tista, with Blue Tista. Blue Tista. Uh, and what's the other big match? I suppose uh, the Rhodes Brothers versus Rybaxel. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, I watched that. Yeah, that was a lot. Is, is on there. Featuring the worst joint theme ever. Uh, and, of course, the one of the other big segments is will uh, Brian Danielson uh, vacate the world uh, title yes, because he's injured he's or will Brie Bella get fired mm. in uh, what is a raw angle on pay-per-view but if you're one of our $25 and above Patreon pledge hammers you get your name read out on the show like these fine folk have a glass of sherry Martel J Simmons the real boss Matt Robinson Max Kurt Wallander Wallen Michael Mark for Life Plowman the Batsman Nathan Batty the intriguing Infrared near Alfredo Vile leader of the Brass NJ Hornsberg Peter Fiber Brantras 
Uh, probably better than Carl, Philip O'Reilly. The man who wears the gold, the man recognized by SWAF Nation International as the 24-7 champion, our legend. Raw's brand ambassador, Redman2490. And Reese Cook, what the rock is smelling. That is your Hall of Fame class for March 19th. 2024 we'll read out the rest of your remaining ultra charts pally here says i was not a fan of the rock concert feels like the same rock we saw during the 2010s and i can't take him seriously as a heel not to mention it takes valuable time that could be given to other storylines i.e bailey and eo love your podcast guys i do agree with you that the rock is the only important thing on smackdown at the moment yeah and i think the bailey and eo for me was there um and has cooled massively cool yeah. yeah moose here says i feel like Co- uh, cody is like the becky of the men's division in that he's pushing what men are allowed to portray on tv if becky showed that a woman can be the man then cody shows a man can be the woman they can be genuine and be accepted for it mm. and- uh, yeah, that's, uh, a bit on the nose but also it is that playing with the irony of becky being the man yeah you know? and that's why it was so funny that rick flair took it so personally <laughs> uh sean has been a member for 34 months in a row said can't wait for rock and cody to engage in the squared circle at wrestlemania over roman i never thought that would happen in a million mm. years geek of arabia said i like the uso segment jimmy's character has been great despite the initial logic the initial logic of it jimmy gone mad from separation anxiety is how i read it love the call cool rikishi sign also tf was that uh, was that chant though promo sucks what i didn't hear it yeah not sure i heard that well, if that is a chant, that's a rubbish chant. That's a, that's a bad chant. Andy Madrid said, hello from San Diego. San Diego. I have this fantasy booking where Drew somehow takes Seth out of the tag match night one in the World Heavyweight Championship match at night two. Solo yanks out the ref while Seth is pinning Drew, mirroring Clash at the castle. Send Dom to Bloodsport for the vibes. <laughs> Uh, Geek of Arabia here says, Chad, somehow echoing my ultra chat from last week when I said Sammy should have evolved from perennial underdog by now. I appreciate the universe carrying my sentiments, WWE, and weaving it into the story. This is also a nice way of keeping Chad involved. Mm. Sign guy in the front row had uh, been on point today. Call Rikishi, hire El Generico, and push Dijak. Push Dijak was a, a, a big one. I'm into that. Matt Hennessy said, I'm a big DIY mark after seeing them steal the show at multiple NXT takeovers. They're delighted they are finally competing at WrestleMania. They've earned it. They had their reunion last October. They got over with the main roster audience, and it's awesome to see them get a big match at WrestleMania. I wonder if Chad will change, uh, train Sammy on how to beat Gunther since Gunther only lost one singles match uh, since being called up to the main roster, and that was to Chad last year. Mm. Um, yeah, although I don't think Chad should be teaching him how to do that because he won via count out, and that's not going to win the title. No, yeah. You need it. Surely Coach Gable will be smarter than that. I think so as well. Isn't it also insane mm. that Gargano and Champa have been with this company for nearly a decade? Yeah. And this is their first WrestleMania match. Yeah, wild. It's wild. Slow on the uptake is this company sometimes. That's why we need tag belts. Yes, it's being used. Caleb Cannon said, excited about the WrestleMania 40 card so far, but it feels like it's missing more non-title matches, especially women's matches. Bianca, Liv, Naomi, and Jade all don't have matches, and some might not get one. There's still time to announce, but not much. I think uh, Jade will not be on the show until after Mania. Jade I think that's, and I think that's much smarter. Yeah. I also think it's probably likely to see Bianca and Naomi going for the tag titles. I think, I think that's that a is idea. a very good decision. Yeah. I gave my theory about this on Saturday that it's supposed to be Sasha Banks. It was supposed to be Sasha Banks, Naomi, going for the titles they never lost. But then oh. Sasha decided to go to AEW, so they just put Bianca in her place instead. I mean, who can argue with £10 million an hour? Like, that's, <laughs> what <I'm paying. laughs> that's what I get paid. Well, there you go. Molten Deester said, Hey guys, feeling a bit under the weather, but still didn't want to miss the stream. I'm pretty sure I'm one of the few people who actually is stoked for Jay versus Jimmy. And I think it could culminate with Jay and Jimmy getting on good terms again. Hmm. Kieran said, Luke, I used to be a little confused why you and Ollie have such an intense disdain for John Cena. Was born in 1998, started watching in 07. But this Seth Rollins run makes me get it a lot more. Boring babyface character work all the time. Yeah, it's... I'm not vibing with this Seth character. It's a bit different than the Cena thing, because the Cena thing was always that the work was bland yeah it's a, cena, well. was, cena was not an exciting worker he wasn't an exciting promo but was pushed to the top guy it also to be said as well with uh, with cena is that cena was being booed everywhere he went but the commentary were like the greatest of all time man there's no one who can do a big match like john cena and we're there watching him being like no there is like there's, there are loads. there's a bunch of people and you're not giving him a chance but sitting in 
2014 this area yeah. that i'm currently covering yeah they're like seth rollins in 2014 is on another level mm. like he's out working everyone that's on the evolution side and then you got ambrose there as well who's also fantastic and roman who's on fire and you got bray in there as well and you're just looking at this group of people and you're like and like cesaro and sheamus were tearing up in the opener on payback and you're like oh look that's what your main event scene should look like but the company go going like ah john cena though yeah. isn't it uh dj chili phil chad gable didn't tell sammy i don't think you can beat gunther he straight up told him you can't beat gunther can't wait to see how this wrinkle might work itself out cat said i hate the whole retcon bit during the jimmy j segment we all know that jimmy was the one who encouraged jay to leave the bloodline i was hoping with this new era of wwe they wouldn't treat us like idiots like vince did some things never change i guess uh, can I hot tag to you? Yes. Uh, Kevin says, okay, let me try to in- invent an explanation. <laughs> Jimmy kicked Roman not to leave the bloodline, but to change it. His promo right after was, let's do this with love and respect. And Jay made the choice to have them leave by saying, you're out and I'm out too. But Jimmy didn't want to leave and he didn't want to have his brother as the tribal chief, which is why he betrayed him. He wanted Roman to consider them as equals, but if Jay stepped up, his plan would fail. And now he wants to remind Jay he's not bigger. I realize this is a big stretch. And also this is a story that they didn't tell so i'm just trying to make it make sense also i think i spent more time thinking about this in wwe's creative team and i'm not paid for it so whatever if anything given you paid for it yes there you go uh, i i i think you might have been uh reaching um, <laughs> however like i don't you know it's it's a good bit of reaching hey we've got a couple of weeks left yeah There's still time um geek of arabia says loved the order love the one shot and the cinematography as a whole kevin dunn leaving wwe is low-key the best thing to have happened to wwe's production quality since jim johnson left the company this is def my last old chat jam that jam guys thank you for all of your support on this, this yeah uh, stream that one oh was was so lovely mm. It really, really was. Uh, in a section, <laughs> the, the mods of <laughs> toxic masculinity ultra chats. Here we go. Um, cuter than Makito said, uh, Maki Ito, excuse me. Uh, Thank you for talking about this. I feel like the masculinity of the sport is not talked about enough. And it means a lot is... Uh, a lot of it is expected and pushed on males when I just want to paint my nails and be my NB self. Thank you for speaking on this. You're an icon. Oh, stop. But also, yeah, uh, ultimately, we all just want to be ourselves. And of course. Expression is, is what we're after, so... I'll be here in my little woke corner for as long as you need me. You little snowflakes over here <laughs> with your wokeness. Get out of here. Uh, Moss Connection. Not says- on my stream. <laughs> um moss connection says just want to say down as a trans male fan everything you say rings so true i know not everyone appreciates what you have to say but it's so incredible to have something someone willing to say the things i feel truly thank you so much you're very welcome i'm glad to be here i hate reading out compliments to myself um, <laughs> but i'm grateful to be here i saw you i saw them coming up which is why i did the hot tag did across you? to you force you to read them yourself cruel cruel man D- dan it, you need to see how good you are at this thank and, and how I appreciated you. you are at this and i i i Look, I mean, China was, and Lita were my formative people and sort of taught me to not be anyone's label or restriction. So I like being present and doing that for other people is the best thing anyone could say to me. So China's theme song said it all, man. Yeah. Don't treat me like a woman. Don't treat me like a man. I also said that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Cooper Crest says. Don't treat me like you know me. Just treat treat me me for who I am. Uh, uh, like a, a couple days ago i heard someone pronounce a date as april 1 <laughs> instead of april the 1st as an american i went home and cried and puked in an attempt to cope i thought dan was a madman hashtag jam that jam <laughs> thank you thank you i don't even think we've talked about this too much but there was a uh, i i got in trouble with the people the americans who had the temerity to call me a snowflake when <laughs> they're getting so triggered by me pointing out that they say dates weirdly and everyone was like you've never heard that. they weren't just saying like no i disagree with you and they were saying you have never heard that no one has ever said that you're just making things up people followed me across platforms to tell me i was making things up and then oh what is it what do i hear drip by drip is it vince mcmahon saying a date weirdly is it a trick for Dune Part 2 saying things weirdly. Have you got it up? I've got it here. So play I, it. Play I, it. I was watching, uh, I think it's Breakdown 98. Yeah. And the main event is Austin versus Undertaker and Kane. And I just I burst out laughing when I saw the, the opening to this video package that I clipped it out to send it to Dan. Because people, one of the arguments I have heard is like, oh, I have heard that day, but it's a new thing. It's a Hollywood nope. thing. Nope. Americans don't say this. It's just a Hollywood thing. It's nope. a brand new thing that people have invented. This is from 1998. September 27, Austin. 
Where Vince McMahon says on September 27, Austin. Look, you're all mental and it's fine. <laughs> we love you anyway, but chill out. Uh, Amy Yeza says, uh, who should be the theoretical opponent for a big show retirement match? He isn't an Undertaker or Flair, but he probably deserves a send off. I know it's a question out of nowhere. It really is. Uh, but it just came to mind. And I was a big, big show fan as a kid. Does he need one? Uh, I don't know if he needs one. However, like I, I remember feeling gutted that Christian didn't have a retirement match. Yes. So I, I, there's kind of guys that I'm like, oh, I'm gutted you didn't get to have yeah. your retirement you match. Know. It doesn't need to be like you don't need to build a whole pay per view around. Just it. a moment. But a yeah. moment, like. But I want to see it against someone like a Marco Stunt. Like, right. I think that's kind of the the fun thing with Big Show. Yeah. Is trying to watch someone trying to chop down the big tree. Mm. Uh, yeah. Or just give him the Shaquille O'Neal match. Oh like, yeah, just, that's just, true. Just give him the Shaquille O'Neal thing. Now, before a big, a big final like showcase yeah. silliness. Yeah, I love that. A Stephen big Miller. showcase. Hey, <laughs> Stephen Miller says, "I'm not blowing smoke when I say this, but Wrestle Talk is how I keep up with all things wrestling. All of the colorful personalities and the great content that I never miss when it comes out. I love you guys genuinely, Luke. I still want you for my biopic narration. I'll be there." <laughs> thank you very much big a97 says uh, i want to say i'm not an aw diehard i like both aw and wwe but for some reason i can't connect with wwe anymore i can't sit through a full episode of wwe but i can sit through a full episode of aw i only watch your reviews for wwe you can't please them all well also it's just you know it's um it's different strikes for different folks mm. you know and i think that's one of the things i find interesting about watching and i get you know i review both raw and dynamite um, and at the moment, SmackDown as well. I get there's even differences between SmackDown and Raw. Like yeah. they feel like very, very different shows. And people want certain things out of wrestling shows, you know. So when I sit there and be like, "Oh man, that was under an hour of wrestling on this show," and it's three hours, I could do with a bit more than that. Some people will respond with, "It's a wrestling show. What do you want? Like it's it's a promo thing. Do people talk? Like that's what you get mm. from it." But then I can watch Dynamite, and oftentimes things like, "Boof!" Actually, it's a bit too much wrestling. I wish we could have. Show. I wish we could it's have a balance. Like, there's a it's a balancing act. Yeah, it's, and, 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 it's I, hard. and I find that sometimes like I don't find all wrestling shows get it, mm. but I know what I like from a wrestling show, and sometimes I get it, and sometimes I don't. But that's the rich tapestry of life. Yeah, uh, we have a note here from Mod Mother who says uh, Tempest needs the studio quickly. So we need, uh, unfortunately we've got one chat left. Yeah, uh, which is uh, booking like a mark who says, "Just curious, what happened to Triple H in this Rollins Rhodes Bloodline storyline? It seemed they were setting up to play." a significant role i feel like um there definitely was something in that there's nothing to say he can't make a an appearance towards the end and, and assert something or other but it was never going to be part of the match so i don't know there's still also if one of them's on the board and the other one's on the head of creative there's still plenty of time i'm telling you now triple h is going to pedigree rock at wrestlemania it's during, during the avengers assemble thing everyone's talking about austin coming down time to play the game i might die zone. and triple h comes down and you start to do the power struggle story for the rest of the year of rock and the board oh. triple h head of creative there's a very real possibility that this year's wrestlemania i'm going to melt <laughs> with glee right let's end this poll um uh do apologize to tempest for uh, <laughs> running slightly late here but Look, thumbs up. some important stuff to talk about thumbs up 77 percent. thumbs in the middle 19 percent on the lower end yeah of the the thumbs up which i'm actually surprised about because i thought people really really like this I, I i was sort of like a yeah you know but anyway that's what we've got time for for this episode we're going to be back on thursday with the dynamite review a stacked old mm. show because we've got <sighs> <sighs> an I quit match, which is that's that's what happens in my quit matches. Is, is it? It's cope a cope and I quit match. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's going to be even more of it. Oh, it's just like <sighs> I'm so torn. No, I want to see the match. I might watch it on mute. <laughs> Uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Eddie versus Kazuchika Okada, which is the reason I'm tuning in for this show. Mm. So we'll be there on Thursday to review that here on the Rest of Podcast channel. Please do press the subscribe button, give us a little thumbs up, leave a comment down below with what you thought of this episode, and we will see you then. I've been Luke Owen, D-A-D. That has been Dan Layton. Jam that jam! <laughs>